Hello everyone, my name is Hannah. Welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to be doing my January wrap up. So I started off the year participating in the Winter Ween Readathon, which is a readathon hosted by Gabby from Gabby Reads and Olivia from Olivia Reads a Latte. They do several of these throughout the year. They do Winter Ween, which is usually in January. Summer Ween, which is in the summer. Um, it was J July last year. And then they do a Camp Weekend Ween around Halloween time. And so I really find these readathons very, very fun to participate in. They're just great. So I have my Winterween vlogs already up on my channel. If you miss those, I will link them in the cards up above. But the first book that I kicked off Winterween with was Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. I have never read this book before. It came out in 2012, I want to say. And so it's been out for a while. It's a lot of people's favorite like thriller. And I was spoiled for the main twist in this book, like obviously because it's been out for about 10 years now. And so I never picked it up because I thought like it wasn't going to be interesting if I already was spoiled for the twist. But that was not the case. Even though I knew what was going to happen, I still really loved this book. Um, I thought it was very well written and I was feeling a lot of things while reading this. Like I really hated Nick Dunn. <laughs> I'm just really, really glad that I picked this up. It was also Chloe's Patreon buddy read pick. So she had also never read this before she's seen the movie though but yeah this was just like a really great time i feel like everybody already knows what this book is about so i'm not going to go into like too many details but yeah if you want to see me read this book for the first time and see my thoughts on it as i read it go check out those winter ween vlogs but i ended up giving this five stars i thought it was really really good and yeah i really liked it the next book I picked up for Winterween was Come Tumbling Down by Shauna McGuire. This is the fifth book. Yes, the fifth book in the Wayward Children series. This is a return to Jack and Jill's world, which is very horror movie-esque. It's like, you know, if Dracula and Frankenstein had to share a world, that's the Moors. And so it just felt like it fit the vibe of this readathon really well. And I wanted to reread this before the seventh book came out which I picked up, you know, later during a readathon. But yeah, I wanted to reread this one and I used it to fill the novella prompt since it's super short, but I love these books. The Wayward Children series is one of my favorite series of all time and I really like Jack and Jill. So it was fun to be back in their world and like kind of wrap up their storyline a little bit. So yeah, this was a reread for me, but I gave it five stars. Then I picked up No Exit by Taylor Adams. I've had this book for a while. I originally DNF'd it when I first picked it up. I think like two years ago. Um, I got about 100 pages in and I just wasn't vibing with it so I DNF'd it but I kept it this whole time because I've just I've literally not heard a single bad thing about this book. Everybody that I know that's read this has absolutely loved it. Ashley from Ashley's Little Library gave this five stars and it's like one of her favorite thrillers so I wanted to give it a second chance and I figured Winterween is the perfect time to pick it up. It's a winter themed thriller and I am really glad that I picked it up. I ended up really liking it. So I got to page 103 on my first read and that's when I DNF'd it and I was like, yeah, it's just not for me. And about like page 105 is when it gets, you know, really interesting. <laughs> so I should have just stuck it out. But at that point, like if I'm 100 pages and I'm not liking it, I don't feel bad that I DNF'd it, but I am glad that I did decide to give it a second chance. It's very like action-packed and thrilling it's one of those where it's like you're going like this the whole time your hands are getting sweaty your heart is beating fast because you just what's gonna happen it's just like so intense but I will say there are several racial slurs in this and some other like inappropriate language that just really did not need to be used and I wish had been edited out and omitted from the story because then it could have been great but I gave it four stars because I did enjoy the story and it did what it wanted you know it did what it was supposed to do but I just wish that Taylor Adams didn't use some of those slurs <laughs> so four out of five for this one then I picked up Where the Drowned Girls Go by Shauna McGuire this is the seventh book in the Wayward Children series and it just came out at the beginning of January so it was one of my most anticipated releases of this year and it's another one that just like fit the vibe it's a novella it's kind of kind of creepy at times and yeah like I said it's just one of my most anticipated releases I hope that Shauna McGuire releases a new Wayward Children's book 
every single year for the foreseeable future because I just love them so much. I just, I hope she doesn't stop writing them. I ended up giving this one a four out of five. I don't want to dive too much into like what it's about um, because I don't want to spoil anything for the rest of the series, but I did really like this installment and I'm eager to see where this story takes us. Then I picked up I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. I listened to the audiobook for this. I had ordered my physical copy from Depop, I think, and it just hadn't arrived yet by that time, but I had the audiobook from my library. And this is a nonfiction true crime book about um, Michelle McNamara's like search for the Golden State Killer. And I found this to be very fascinating. I didn't know pretty much anything about the Golden State Killer or the East Area Rapist, same person. Um, I didn't know anything about that and I just found the way that this book laid out the cases and like the clues and stuff to what happened. I just found it to be very fascinating. Um, unfortunately, Michelle McNamara died suddenly before she could like see the resolution of this case that she had dedicated so much of her life to. But they did catch the killer like a few years ago. Um, but unfortunately, Michelle died a few years before that and never got to like see this case be solved. But I just, I really thought that this was a very fascinating true crime book. I have not read much true crime and it's definitely something I want to read more of. But yeah, I decided not to give this a rating because it would feel very weird to rate a nonfiction book about other people's traumas. So I'm just not going to do that, but I did enjoy my read. I don't want to say enjoy because I didn't enjoy reading it, but I found it fascinating. I don't know. I never know how to explain my feelings on that. No rating for this one. And then I read probably the darkest uh, book that I've ever read in my entire life, which is Tender is the Flesh by Augustina Basterica. So this is set in a like dystopian world where uh, animal meat has become infected with this virus that is fatal to humans if they consume it. And so we, humans aren't able to eat meat anymore. And so they resort to cannibalism so that they can still eat meat, they just can't eat animal meat. So they eat human meat instead and they call it special meat. And it's about like society's kind of hypocrisy of the meat industry basically. And like what people will go, like the lengths that people will go to to put their blinders on so they don't have to face the ugly truth. And yeah, it was really gross at parts and very dark and very very thought-provoking like very interesting to see this author's take on what the world would be like if this event happened and like I don't know I just it was really interesting very dark pretty gross I gave it four stars I liked it but like in a twisted way you know <laughs> so that was the final book that I picked up for Winterween then after reading Ender's the Flesh and like having those like dark thoughts in my head of like these situations I decided to pick up something that was kind of light and fluffy for me and I picked up Giant Days volume 6. <laughs> uh, this is a comfort graphic novel series for me. I have been slowly rereading them because I love them so much and these characters are just everything to me. I am very attached to them and I just really like seeing their little slice of life. I think they're hilarious and very lovable characters and yeah it was just exactly what I needed after Tender as the Flesh. This was just a very fun cute graphic novel. I gave it four stars. Honestly I think I give most of the Giant Days graphic novels four stars but the series as a whole is five stars to me so I don't know. Do with that what you will but I love this so if you haven't read Giant Days yet I highly recommend it. Then I finally picked up Witch Shadow by Susan Dennard. I had reread all of the other books in the Truthlands, no, the Witchlands series um, last year in anticipation for this novel being released. And I think it came out in June. And then I went through a romance reading mood. So I didn't want to pick up a fantasy. And so I just hadn't picked it up yet. So I finally did pick it up now that I'm back in a fantasy mood. And this was just not my favorite in the series. I did still like it. I like being with these characters, but the author made a choice in this one to kind of disorder the timeline. So like you open the book up and you're like, what? I don't remember any of this happening. And I should because I reread these. 
and I read a recap before diving into this just to make sure I was like in the story and I'm like well I don't remember any of this stuff happening and then like a hundred pages later you're like oh yeah this was what happened before this is what led to that so now we're talking about how we got there so you didn't know that anyways and I'm like why what was the point of that it was just like I don't know it was really frustrating that like the events that happened were all out of order so I just I felt like I was missing something even though I wasn't you know like I didn't forget anything it just was never explained that that happened so it was a little frustrating but I did like the information we get in this book I'm curious to see where the story is going to go from here I think there's only one book left in the series but yeah it's kind of hard to talk about this like the plot of this book without talking about the you know the previous books so I'm just going to leave it at that I ended up giving this three stars just because that disordered timeline thing was kind of frustrating for me then I did a vlog where I picked up four books specifically off of my friend Ashley's recommendations. Ashley from Ashley's Little Library. I talk about her all the time. You all know her. I feel like we have very similar reading tastes and I wanted to put it to the test and I picked up four books that I probably never would have picked up without having heard that Ashley loved them first or having her recommend them to me. Apart from this first one here, which is A Spindle Splintered by Alexi Harrow, I probably would have picked this one up if Ashley hadn't mentioned it at all um, eventually, but I definitely picked it up because of her because she gifted it to me for Christmas and I had seen her like read and really like it. So I was like, oh, I definitely want to pick that one up right away. So this is basically just a really short novella. I think it's like a hundred, it's just over a hundred pages, like 115 pages. And it is a Sleeping Beauty retelling. It's kind of like a, a multiverse Sleeping Beauty retelling. But yeah, basically this girl, Zinnia, it's like her 21st birthday and she's obsessed with Sleeping Beauty and her friend gets this like spinning wheel kind of as like a joke, like a prop for her birthday party. And she pricks her finger on the spindle of the spinning wheel and like falls into this other world where there's a different Sleeping Beauty with like different problems that she's trying to deal with. And so Zinnia is like one, trying to help this other girl, but also trying to find her way back to her own world. And... I really like this one. I really like Alex E. Harrow's writing. So I'll definitely be picking up the next book in this series. It's called the Fractured Fables series. So I'm not sure if it's going to follow the same character. I think so. But either way, I'm really excited about it. I will say this quote here by Catherine Arden, this like blurb on the front cover says a vivid, submersive and feminist reimagining of Sleeping Beauty. And that's basically exactly how I would describe this. It's just... It was a delight. I gave it four stars. I also picked up The Immortalist by Chloe Benjamin for that vlog. I have heard of this one before and I at one point owned it and I just like felt like maybe it wasn't my thing so I never read it and then I was looking on Ashley's Goodreads being a little snoop and I saw this was on her like all-time favorites list and she gave it five stars. So I was like, okay, maybe I should give it a try. Basically, it follows these four siblings who, when they're children, they go to a fortune teller and she tells them the day they're going to die, like the date of their death. And it kind of haunts them throughout their lives. And basically, it follows these four siblings, like just living their lives, knowing that information though, and like how they're going to let it affect them, how they live their lives. And the uh, top of the back cover says, if you knew the date of your death, how would you live your life? And it really explores that idea of like, if you know something of the future, even if it's something so small like that, how will it affect how you live your life? And I just find that concept to be very, very fascinating. This was a really good like kind of character study of these siblings and I really really enjoyed it. I wasn't sure if I would. I was kind of nervous about it but I got super invested and I really didn't want to put it down. I got about halfway through and then I was trying to decide between finishing this one or picking up a spindle splintered. Ultimately I ended up picking this one up but I was like I don't want to stop reading this. It was so good. So yeah I ended up giving this one a four stars. I really like it and if you like that concept or if you just like like books about siblings I would highly recommend this one. The next one I picked up for that vlog was Una Out of Order by Margarita Montemore. This is another kind of like 
seeing the future, a glimpse into the future one, but in a very different and unique way. It's about this girl, Una, who after her 18th birthday, every birthday she has, she wakes up in a different random year of her life. So like when it's her 19th birthday, she is 19 in her head, but living in her 51 year old body, like in her 51 year old life. So she has no idea what's going on. She's like, what the heck just happened to me? And she has to live that whole year in that random year of her life. And then the next birthday she has, she'll be at a different random year. So then she's like 28. And so it's like, you kind of see, you know, where your life is going to go, but you don't really know how you got there. And she makes it a point when she's like, basically time traveling, like no spoilers. So she doesn't want to like ruin things for herself. And it explores that idea of like, if you know something's going to happen, and then in your past self, like if you try to prevent that thing, was you trying to prevent it end up leading to that anyways? Like there's no way to kind of change what's going to happen. I just find that concept to be so incredibly interesting. And I just thought this book was also so incredibly interesting. I really liked Una and I thought it was really like fun to kind of jump around her life and see her like try to figure things out. I just can't imagine like if that actually happened like how confusing that would be and how scary almost like you have to live this whole year of your life with these people that you've never met before but your past self has and has developed relationships with. Oh, it was just insane. But yeah, I ended up giving this one a four out of five stars as well. I really liked it. And then the final book that I read for that vlog was The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein by Kirsten White. This one has come out, had come out a couple years ago and I just never, you know, thought anything about it. But this was one of Ashley's favorite books of last year, I believe. And so I asked her for a recommendation, like if she could only recommend me one book, what would it be? And she recommended Una Out of Order or The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein. And this one basically follows this girl, Elizabeth, who is kind of forced to be friends with Victor Frankenstein. And it's like the only way that she's able to survive. Otherwise, she's like kicked out of this house. She her She's orphaned. And this lady that she's staying with is like, she's useless. I don't want her anymore. So she sells her to the Frankensteins. And so Elizabeth has to be friends with Victor because if they kick her out, she has nowhere to go and like no money. And it's basically her like kind of realizing that Victor is a little bit dangerous and she's like trying to kind of manage that for her own like safety. And it, it's just, oh, it's just a really interesting story. I really liked this take on Frankenstein and how Elizabeth kind of played a role in this story. And I ended up giving this one a four out of five stars. I really liked it. And I really liked the writing. I thought the writing was very, very beautiful. Then I picked up The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. This was a reread for me. My friend Jan from Jan Ag has a book club the full moon book club and this was the January pick and obviously I love this book I it's one of my favorites it's probably one of the only middle grades that I've ever read that I've loved as much as this it's about this girl Luna who this this town like this little protectorate they every year have to give up a baby and like sacrifice it to the witch of the wood because they think that that then the witch will leave their town alone and the witch actually is not evil and she's like why are these people like leaving their babies in the woods like ugh, i'm gonna take it and go take care of it and she takes it to a new town but every year she feeds the babies starlight which gives them these kind of like special gifts it just kind of makes them special and this one baby she picks up luna um he ends up accidentally feeding her moonlight instead which gives her like magical abilities and kind of turns her into a witch and so the witch of the wood is like oh I can't just like give her to somebody else who's not experienced in this I have to keep her as my own and it's this like whole little story of magic and whimsy and it's just it's so cute it's got a great like moral of the story and the writing is so amazing I just love this one so much the first time I read it I gave it four stars but on this reread I'm like it's really more of a five star read for me it's it's so good so yeah, I love this one. All right, now these next four books. <laughs> 
I finished my reread of the Throne of Glass series. So I read Queen of Shadows, Empire of Storms, Tower of Dawn, and Kingdom of Ash. This is my favorite series of all time. So if you're curious about that comment, if you know me at all, A Court of Mist and Fury is my favorite book of all time. And yes, I love the A Court of Thorns and Roses series. I love it so much. I love the characters so much. But as a whole series, Throne of Glass is just so well done. The story, the little seeds of story that you get in the first books and the like foreshadowing in the first books that come all the way to the end of the series and how it plays out and the character development and where the story goes from where it started. It's just insane. It's so, so good. And I just, I am so incredibly attached to these characters and this world and I just love it. I just love it so much. I cannot sing its praises enough. If you haven't read the Throne of Glass series and you like fantasy books, I would highly recommend it. I know that it gets a ton of hype, but honestly, to me, I feel like it is so well deserved. It is the best fantasy series that I've ever read. So Queen of Shadows is my favorite book in the whole series. I just, I love everything that happens in this book. I just, I just love it so much. I gave this one five stars, obviously. Empire of Storms, five stars. Tower of Dawn, I gave four stars. This is the only Sarah J Mass book that I've given four stars. Everything else I've given five stars, I think. Maybe Catwoman was four stars. I'm not sure. But the character that this book mainly follows is not my favorite. Um, and it basically, it's the same timeline as Empire of Storms. So we're following events that happen in this book. And then at the same time, these events are happening, but somewhere else. And I like the characters that we follow in this one way more. And the characters that are in here are just kind of like... They're okay. I like them, but not as much as the other ones. There's in fact even a character that I just don't like that this follows. Anyways, that's all I'm going to say about that. Four stars for that one. And then the finale, Kingdom of Ash. I gave five stars. I cried a lot in this uh, book. And even though I had already tabbed it, I tabbed it even more on my reread of it. This was my first time rereading this one. I've only read it the one time, like when it was released. And... I just love it so much and it's one of those series that like I finished reading this and then I immediately wanted to start the series over again which has happened like every time that I've reread the throne of the last series I'll reread up to like whatever the last book is when I reread it and then I'll want to start it all over again oh, it's just so good okay and then the last book that I'm going to mention for my January wrap-up is Uprooted by Naomi Novik now I am currently reading this one I am about three quarters of the way through it maybe, two thirds of the way through it. I'm on page 286 of 450. But it's Sunday the 30th right now. So I have the rest of the day today and tomorrow to try to finish this, which I know I will because I'm probably gonna end up finishing it today. But I just wanted to mention it in this video because I'm filming it like slightly ahead of the end of the month. But I'm really liking this one. I specifically picked this up because I heard that it's like, kind of similar to the bear and the nightingale like the winter night trilogy because of the like russian folklore and so i had read spinning silver by naomi novik and it was good but i think maybe i just read it at the wrong time maybe if i had read it when i was like just finishing the winter night trilogy i would have liked it more but i wanted to pick this one up because it's got like really good reviews and it's got the russian like fairy tale folklore aspect to it and I'm really, really enjoying it. I am pleasantly surprised. I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about this one. And I'm really liking it. So as of right now, I'm leaning at a four stars. But I still have, you know, over 100 pages left of this. So that could change, you know, either way, really. But I did want to just mention that I will be finishing this in January. I just haven't quite finished it yet. So you can follow my Goodreads if you want to know my final rating on this one. All right. So... <laughs> This is a big stack. I'm sure it's going to fall and I'm going to be sad about that. So let's try to get it to not fall. Let's do an elevator thing. Here are all of the books that I read in January. It was a great reading month. I am very happy with everything that I read. And I'm excited to, that I started off the year on a like a high note. I read, this is 18 if I finish Uprooted, which I will. And... I read a ton of five-star and four-star reads, so 
I'm just really happy with everything that I read in January. So let me know down in the comments if you've read any of these and what your thoughts are. Let me know also if you've read the Throne of Glass series and if you haven't, if you have plans to, if I could convince you at all to read that series. Or let me know what your favorite book that you read in January was. I think, I mean, if I'm not counting my rereads, because obviously my favorite book then would have been Queen of Shadows, I think I would have to say Gone Girl was my favorite if I'm not counting any of my rereads. So yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you all in my next one. Bye.